Hello everyone, thank you for joining. My name is Peter Wolf, and thank you for watching the Wolf Ecology Coffee Vlog. Uh, today uh, we're talking about uh, books, uh, but books specifically about just the green coffee. You will have noticed on my previous vlog we talked about roasting. So I have four books today uh, that I'd like to sort of share with you that I think are well worthwhile you adding to your library uh, for, for roasting uh, and looking at green coffee. The first book goes without saying, uh, it's been around for a while, but I think definitely something that you would want to consider. This is the Defects Handbook uh, that's been brought out. As you can see, mine's quite a, quite a well-worn uh, copy that I have. Uh, I've had it for quite a while. Uh, but this particular one uh, looks at all at identifying and understanding the green coffee defects. And I think, you know, it's a really sort of uh, invaluable field manual. Talks about uh, all the different types of defects, sample cupping and preparation as well, which I think is really great. And then obviously there's a visual, a visual picture of each of the defects and uh, how many points it equates to the defects tally on your score sheet. Uh, but then also talking about what the flavour taints that will, be, that will be created to the cup and also how and why these uh, particular specific defects uh, are created in terms of the growing side of the thing. So definitely this is a, a great book to get. Uh, this is the Defects Cupping Handbook. The second book that I particularly like um, is from uh, good old James Hoffman. Uh, and this is obviously the World Atlas of Coffee. Uh, James, and this book has been out for a while, and most of you would know James as being one of the uh, founders uh, of uh, Square Mile Coffee Roasters in London. Uh, and so James has obviously uh, put this book together. And why I like recommending it to people is uh, one of the things that I particularly like in this book is that it really sort of starts to focus in on the, the specific regionality of, of coffee origins. So, you know, it will talk about Guatemalan coffees and it will then specifically talk about each of the specific growing regions within Guatemala, but then also draw to that specific sort of uh, or general sort of flavour characteristics. And I think, you know, once you sort of, you know, been roasting coffee for a while and you start looking at wanting to either blend coffee or understand coffee at a deeper level, I think this is a really good book to use as a reference. So one can sort of understand what the, the, the particular sort of regions are going to produce in terms of cup uh, cup flavour experience and more importantly that if you are thinking about a specific sort of quality that you're looking for in your coffee this is certainly a really good sort of reference tool for you to go through to uh, to try and find where that may be located so definitely uh, it's a great book to read uh, but that's the part that I particularly find really valuable uh, and that I recommend to new new coffee roasters. The other, the other one, uh, which is fairly hardcore, uh, you know, it, it's been around for, for a while, is the Winchins. Um, and this is obviously coffee growing and processing and sustainable production. Again, fairly, uh, fairly extensive. And this really sort of takes a very deep level. Uh, it takes you down to a very deep level of, of understanding of uh, how coffee is obviously grown, uh, what, what it, sort of particular sort of stresses and I guess uh, influences are affecting how the, the, the actual tree itself and then obviously in turn the fruit that it produces. It looks at sort of general agronomy, uh, soil practices, talks in general about sort of pesticides and herbicides and then again looking at harvesting and then sort of obviously not only processing um, but also post-processing techniques. And so I think if you're really one that wants to sort of uh, then you know sort of get in inside the sort of uh, understanding of what a producer is sort of experiencing and what their challenges are this is certainly the book for you. Um, it's, it, it, it's look it's a very interesting read and something I find uh, would be very available. Again, uh, definitely something on the must-do list. Finally, I have a book specifically not about coffee, uh, but I think it's a book about tea, and it's called Tea Calcified. I threw this in because obviously tea has not been mentioned very much, I suppose, from us uh, to date. But one of the things about running a coffee business uh, and a coffee roasting business is that most of us are selling tea as a complement with, uh, with coffee. And this particular book here really talks about all the different types of teas that are available from black teas, white teas, to herbal, to sans, oolongs, you name it. And it's a really good book. I actually happened to buy this book by accident um, and I was just sort of wandering around a bookshop 
came, I, I stumbled across it, and I have to say, have found it to be an absolutely wonderful resource. Again, not unlike James's book, where it's uh, been basically something that you know allows you to understand more about yellow teas, pura as well, and then sort of thinking about sort of what the, the qualities that you're particularly looking for helps you sort of understand tea grading as well. Um, so what's the difference between you know broken orange pico to you know silvery, tippy, flowery, golden orange pico grade one. So what does that all mean? So we have this as a, as a book for you to talk about tea. Just wanted to bring it in as a mention, but yeah, definitely they would be the four books that I would be recommending that, would, that are sort of specifically looking at the raw product. Thanks for watching everyone.